It's unfortunately a story we hear all too often. Russian oligarch buys a mansion in Switzerland, realizes there's no art on the walls, drops two billion to rectify aforementioned empty wall crisis, claims he overspent and was swindled out of nearly a billion dollars on those art purchases, then sues his art advisor nine times on three different continents, ultimately taking Sotheby's to court in New York, claiming they were complicit in all this deception. I swear if I had a nickel for every time I hear one of these stories. This is the case of the fertilizer fat cat versus the art establishment, and it all just went down in a courtroom in New York City. So, let's get into it. Art lovers, welcome back to the channel. This is the place where we talk about all things modern and contemporary art and design. And there's nothing I like more than a juicy art world story. But the problem is much of this juiciness is usually kept behind closed doors, in back rooms, and settled out of court. But one man, Dmitry Rybolovlev, is pissed off and seems no longer interested in the discretion that is typical in the high and mighty inner art world circles. You see, Dmitry is a Russian billionaire. He made his fortune in finance and fertilizer. He also owns Monaco's football team. So yes, obviously a very sympathetic character. It all started back in 2002, when Dmitry, like every proper Russian billionaire, needed a mansion in Geneva. So he bought one, and as he was touring it, he noticed the previous owner had a Chagall hanging on the wall. He then noticed all the spotlights, highlighting blank spaces in his new mansion and realized, to be a proper billionaire, he would need to fill all that blank space. So he did what any of us would do in this situation dropped about $2 billion to fix this problem. But he didn't just spend this money over the weekend at the local art fair. He was buying works by Picasso, Matisse, and Mark Rothko. And you don't just go out to your local art depot and buy a Rothko. I mean, I can't even buy socks without texting my more fashionable friends for their approval. When buying art at this level, you need someone who can help you navigate the art world. You need a trusted advisor to work for you to ensure you are getting the best possible works at the best price. You hire an art consultant. Enter Yves Bouvier. Bouvier fancied himself an art dealer, but where he got his start was in operating free ports. A free port is basically a fancy name for a glorified warehouse a place where the ultra-wealthy can ship their $30 million Monet and avoid paying taxes. And Bouvier operated or owned stakes in free ports in Geneva, in Luxembourg, in Singapore. And the advantage this gave him was he knew where some of the most important works of art still in private hands were stored. Now think about that. If you know where the art is stored, its general sense of value, and who the owners of that art are, all you really need now is some billionaire with a new mansion and a bunch of empty walls. I'm sure you're starting to connect the dots here. So Bouvier and Dimitri start a relationship. And Dimitri thought this relationship meant Bouvier would source the art, Dimitri would buy it, and then in turn give Bouvier a commission, generally around 2% on the works he purchased. Sell a billionaire a $20 million painting and get a $400,000 check for making the deal happen. Everybody's happy, right? Dimitri's getting lovely art for his walls, and Bouvier is making fat commission checks. He sells him a Van Gogh, then a Picasso, and then a Modigliani. All of these works cost in the tens of millions of dollars. He sells him Mark Rothko's painting number six, this is the actual painting that is on the cover of the artist's catalog raisonné. And Dimitri bought it for 140 million euros. And all these paintings had paperwork from all over the world. Dimitri thought he was buying from collectors in France, in Hong Kong. And the most famous work Mr. Bouvier sold to Dimitri? You guessed it, Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi. 
And yes, I'm talking about that Salvador Mundi. Dimitri bought that for $127.5 million. So again, you're probably thinking, what's the big deal? Some rich guy spends a crazy amount of money on a lot of art. That's hardly breaking news. But this is where the story gets interesting. Remember that 2% commission Dimitri was paying Bouvier for all these purchases? Turns out Bouvier might have been making quite a bit more than that paltry 2%. So Dimitri takes a vacation in 2014, heads to the Caribbean for a little R&R. And you've got to be thinking, he's probably questioning some of these purchases. I mean, he spent around $2 billion with Bouvier. Was he buying too much art? Was he paying too much? I don't care how rich you are, that is a ton of money. So it turns out, while on vacation, Dimitri meets a different art consultant from New York. It just so happens that this very art consultant had helped broker the deal for the Modigliani painting he had recently purchased. And Dimitri decided to do some digging. You see, that consultant had sold the Modigliani for $93.5 million and Dimitri had purchased it for $118 million. Dimitri had thought the selling price was 118, and then he would pay Bouvier his 2% commission. What actually happened was Bouvier had bought the painting for 93.5 million, then immediately flipped it to Dimitri for 118. Oh, and apparently he still charged Dimitri that 2% commission. So basically, Bouvier turned his $2.3 million commission check, the one he would have made from 2% of that sale, into an almost $25 million profit. Not bad work if you can get it. And it turns out, Bouvier didn't just flip this one Modigliani painting. That Rothko I mentioned, that is on the cover of the Catalogue Raisonne, the one that Dimitri bought for 140 million euros, Bouvier had bought that one too. He bought it for 80 million euros, then, of course, flipped it to Dimitri for a tidy 60 million euro profit. And what about the Salvador Mundi? Dimitri had paid nearly 128 million dollars for this Leonardo Resto mod. Well, Bouvier had purchased that for a little more than 75 million dollars, and you guessed it, then flipped it to Dimitri. All in all, Dimitri estimates that he was swindled out of nearly a billion dollars by Bouvier. Bouvier, for his part, didn't think he had done anything wrong. He doesn't consider himself an advisor. He said he could price works as he wished. But to Dimitri, this still looked like fraud, and he wanted to get even. So Dimitri started the lawsuits in Singapore, Monaco, and Switzerland, pretty much any place the two had done business, or wherever Bouvier owned a free port. These court battles go on for more than 10 years, and a lot of these cases were thrown out or dismissed, with the court saying they were the wrong venue or didn't have jurisdiction. But you can imagine defending yourself against a billionaire in multiple venues across the globe would quickly get pretty expensive. So finally, at the end of last year, the two settled. And we don't know what they settled for, but Bouvier considered it a victory. But Dimitri isn't done yet. He's looking to find the next party that's culpable. You see, as Dimitri was buying more and more works, and as the prices were escalating higher and higher, often over $100 million, he started having doubts about the prices he was paying and the historical significance of the individual works. So Bouvier had been forwarding emails to Dimitri he had from Sotheby's, praising the work's significance and often offering comparable prices. So Dimitri now sues Sotheby's, saying they were complicit in the fraud brought to him by Bouvier. And so he sues them for $190 million in damages. And it should be noted that Dimitri was not and is not on the US sanctions list. He had every right to come to the U.S., to New York, and sue Sotheby's. Kelly Crow reports on the arts and the art market for the Wall Street Journal, and I highly recommend her articles and also her Instagram, where she was giving live updates every day from just outside the courthouse. 
She was in the courtroom for the trial, and what she saw was remarkable. This Russian oligarch came to New York, took the stand, and he cried. Crow reports Dimitri was asked, why did you trust Bouvier? Why did you trust him? To which Dimitri basically replied, look, I don't trust very many people. It's really hard for me to do that. But once I do, once you get in, I treat you like family. In the end, and despite the tears, the jury ruled in favor of Sotheby's. They cleared them in federal court of the claims that they had helped Bouvier defraud Dimitri. But this was a rare occasion where we got a little glimpse of what happens behind the curtains in some of these high dollar art deals. And Dimitri didn't consider it a total loss. After the trial, his lawyer said, we achieved our goal of shining a light on the lack of transparency that plagues the art market. But ultimately, even as this trial concluded, it raises even more questions in my head. If I buy a painting for $10 and sell it for $1,000, can I be sued for marking the price up too high? What if I sold that same painting for $10,000? What's the point where it gets to be too much? And let's not forget that Da Vinci that Dimitri bought, the one he paid $127.5 million for and claimed Bouvier made tens of millions of dollars by overcharging him? Well, Dimitri later sold that same painting in a public auction at Christie's for around $450 million. Kind of hard to feel bad for someone who just made $300 million on that one transaction. I'm sure this isn't the end of the story, so if any more juicy goodness comes out of this, I'll be sure to report it here. And if you find the art market as fascinating as I do, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'll be live streaming the spring auctions coming up in a couple of months, and that always leads to an interesting discussion. So thanks so much for watching. I always really appreciate the people who make it to the end, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Ciao.